Hello everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. Today we're back in our little crafty workshop and we are going to be making some automata. Now, a couple of weeks ago we made this one, which is a bird feeding its chicks. And the automata are kind of um, like a, uh, this is a little hand cranked mechanism. And we want to create some movement between all of these little wooden parts. So we're going to be creating today a different type of automata, some different movements, um, just to show you that variation. We're going to keep it in the same theme, so we're going to have the birds coming back, um, but a different set of movements, and we're going to kind of experiment, show you a few different techniques that you could use to make your own, and kind of try and inspire you to, to create your own automata. Okay, so before we get started, we just want to run through some of the things that you might need, some of the materials or the, the machines that we're going to be using. We're mostly going to be cutting this on the scroll saw. So all the little component parts, the, um, the cam wheels and things like that, we're going to cut on the scroll saw. We're going to use the pillar drill because it's very important that we get nice um, straight drill bits in here. So we don't want to drill at an angle um, by hand. We're going to be using a variety of sizes of dowels. So we've got a four mil, a six mil, an eight mil dowel, and then the corresponding drill bits. So we've got a four, a 4.5, then we've got our six and a 6.5. And these are what we're going to need to be able to, you know, create a friction fit between the dowel and the component. And then we are going to have one that's just slightly bigger so we can drill these holes that the dowel can move in and out of. So we've got a few drill bits, we've got a few bits of dowel. Um, this is just a piece of, uh, piece of popular that we can create our box with. Again, that could be any type of timber. We've got some pre-cut bits there. And yeah, we're going to need to mark this out, draw some lines on it because we need to find center. Um, and then we can start with the drilling process and start plotting out where these bits are going to be. Here's our little box, our kind of practice box. And I would definitely recommend having something that you can practice and play around with at first. You may want to make this a removable lid so you can just drill holes and, and practice on, on one piece. With these automata, we're going to need something that is like a drive shaft that runs right the way through. And just in this practice stage, we're not going to put a handle on or anything, but to complete the project, we're gonna put a handle on a little bit later. But for now, we can just crank this by hand, turn it over, and we're gonna explain some of the, the different types of cams and how they work. Let's have a little look at some of these cams or, or little drive wheels. You can see on this one, it has just one little lip. And on this one, we have four, okay? Now, what that means is when we're using that in the box, so gonna slide these over, and these are a friction fit. Let's just align that with that center hole here. And that's got a 6.5 drill hole in there. Um, so I'm going to use my six mil dowel. This again, this is really just to give you an idea of the kind of movements you, you can achieve. So putting something nice and bright on the top there will kind of show it a bit better. But you've got to imagine, you know, your kind of cut piece or the, um, you know, whatever character or animal it is that you're putting on top here. Um, this is the kind of movement. So we're going similar to the other one. We've got that up down movement. So on this one, we've got a, a like a little flag, but this is going up and down four times with each revolution. Now, if we were to change that wheel to the one with one step. So we're changing from the one with four to the one that only has one step on it. You can see that that's then only going to go down, up and down once per revolution. So how I imagine it is if you were to create something like, um, like a man playing a guitar or, or something similar, you could have this one driving um, its foot, so it'll be tapping a foot four times, and then one strum on the guitar with the other one which we've now got fitted. 
So what we're going to try and introduce is a kind of a, like a timing to our cogs and the movements uh, that they represent on top. So we're going with this kind of star-shaped uh, four-toothed wheel just under the center one there. And then we're going to put the one with the one tooth off to the side. And you could position these side by side so that they could be very close together, spread them out. Um, but this is really just an example of how these two little things are going to work together. So we're putting our dowels in. And then what we should see is that this one moves up and down once for every four times that this one moves up and down. We've got a little bit of binding there, and just a little tip whilst we're um, doing that, a little bit of candle wax or something on that is going to reduce the friction that we're getting from this hole, and it's going to allow that to drop back down. Very light at the moment. So there we go, that's working there. So really simple movement, that one. You can make those teeth bigger. You can make the wheels bigger um, and, and you're going to get a variation on that timing and, um, and how far up and down that that's going to move. Okay, so just a little, a little peek at some of the um, kind of movements that we can create. The next movement I want to show you is the one that we're going to be doing today is a little kind of side to side type of movement. So we have a couple of cams here, just drilled off center in the same place for both of them. Now we can thread those onto our little drive shaft in the middle here. And we want these facing the opposite way. And then just putting them so that their high spots are alternating, just like that, up and down um, on each of these cams. Now, when we introduce a wheel on top of that, what that's going to do is kind of turn the wheel backwards and forwards as the cams pick up. So here we have a little wheel uh, with a six mil hole drilled in it, and that's where our six mil dowel is going to fit in. So we're just going to pop that in underneath. We can eyeball from the top where the hole is, and then we're going to slip that one in and just push that home through there so that we've got our six mil dowel into our six mil hole and onto that wheel. Now, because we've got those offset cams, we'll show you that um, the movement that this creates. So if I turn the drive shaft, it's picking up on one and then picking up on the other. So we're getting a side to side movement. And that's the movement that we're going to be creating today to make our little bird look side to side. Just a slightly different movement, that one. Of course, you could always slip one of these to one side and just create that round and round. So if you had, um, so I'm imagining kind of the little ballerinas that you get on in the musical boxes. If we were to move just so we've just got one of those cams, we're just going to get that continuous rotation one way or the other. So that's another movement that you can do. Really simple. And you can build two or three of these um, depending on your size of wheel under here. So you could have things spinning and or dancing going up and down at the same time. If you didn't want that up and down movement, you could just drill central into your hole. And that's just gonna make it just do a, a spin on the spot. Another quick way of uh, creating some movement in your automaton. So let's take this one out. Kind of similar, just another quick one I wanna show you. Another kind of string to the bow. It's just like a, a flat piece of ply and I've just drilled a hole through that one. And that's kind of like a little flap that 
that um, turns round. And this will be good for a quick up and down movement. Let's pop our little end cap there to keep things in line. And just slide that across. And again, we can use just something like a dowel that's gonna sit on there. We just need to trim the length of that, but you can see what it's gonna do. Um, it's binding because it's just a bit too long at the moment, but that's going to create quite a bigger upwards and downwards movement or vertical movement on your automaton. But we're just gonna take a little section off and we can always take more off if we need to. Oops. Um, but of course you can't put it back on. So always take a little bit and test it. Okay, so that's giving us quite a um, quick movement compared to the similar one that we did with the, with the one tooth. Okay, it kind of catches it out on its, um, you know, on a, on a bigger circle, which is creating a, a quick kind of peak movement. So, you, you know, that's again something that we're going to be looking at later. Um, in this video, we're going to have a couple of little worms peeking up and down and also a bird um, looking side to side with the, the two offset cams that we, we looked at um, to create this new automata. So first thing we need to do is make our little box, which, is, um, which everything's going to sit into. So we're going to make a little box similar to this one. And I'm starting off with some 19 millimeter squares, so just over three and a half inches and I'm going to put that rule corner to corner and make a little mark in the middle because we want to find center on these and drill um, a hole nice and central and that's where our kind of drive shaft for the mechanism is going to sit. So just doing a little cross on each rule corner to corner to reveal center. Good. So we'll take those over to the pillar drill in a minute. We also want to find uh, or put a center line on our top piece. Okay, I've gone a little bit thicker than the last one and that's going to help keep everything nice and straight as they, they're moving around in the project. So again, we're about 90 mil wide there. So we're going to drop one in at 45. And same the other side. And then we're just gonna draw a line on across the top. We can sand this off or rub it out with a pencil razor a bit later. And there we go, so we've got our center line and we've got two little X marks the spot in the center of our ends. So that's going to go like that. We're going to have our lid on top and then we're going to have a bottom piece as well. Just sitting under there. And what we should find is that this X is directly underneath this line. So any drilling that we do, we know when we put our drive shaft through the middle that the dowels running down vertically are going to sit on that um, horizontal drive shaft. So now a little bit of drilling to do. So we're set up on the pillar drill here. I've got a little backing board on the table and I've just set the height of the, um, the table so that the drill bit just goes into that backing board and, and supports the cut underneath. We are using a six mil piece of dowel as our main kind of drive shaft on our automata. So we've gone for a slightly bigger drill bit, 6.5. That's gonna allow that to rotate in the box. Got my um, specs on. And I still feel safe holding this piece by hand. Any smaller than this, and you may want to clamp this. Just aligning that spur with that center point. And then we're drilling right the way through on both bits. Okay, so we're gonna glue our little frame together. We do have to drill a couple more bits in this, but um, we can do that as is. So we're gonna use the um, Z epoxy. This is a five minute epoxy resin, so quick curing resin and equal parts of each. But again, you could make this little frame any way you want. You could dowel it, 
do dovetail if you wanted to remove it and change up the uh, mechanism. But we're just going to glue this for today, a five minute glue. And then this can be curing as we um, start to cut some other bits on the scroll saw. We've got the workshop scroll saw today. We're going to be working on that one just to change things up a little bit. So really good mix of that glue or epoxy. And I'm just going to put a little kind of bead of glue along here. So really simple kind of craft project. Otherwise, like I say, you might want to get into your joinery. Um, but this is just for speed, really. Quite a simple little thing to make. So we'll concentrate more on our cutting on the scroll saw and our mechanisms. Don't be too stingy with the glue. We want this to hold together properly. That's good. And then we're going to put our lid on, but with, remember we put a center line on there. So we're going to keep that center line facing up. Might need to play around with this a little. Just get everything flush. And we can sand the ends of this. If we've got a little bit of excess glue, we can scrape off the worst of it. And then just a bit of sanding at the end. Um, when that's all set. So I'm going to put a clamp on that um, and allow it to dry. So putting a little bit of pressure on with the clamp. Just make sure everything's in place. Sometimes things can shift when we clamp them. So just a little check round. Just going to squeegee you off that little bit of glue there. And then that can sit to one side and, um, and dry while we're working on other things. So our first job, we're going to cut a couple of our little cams that are going to sit on that drive shaft and they're going to turn our bird's head side to side. Um, we are using a bit of broomstick. So this is just a bit of pine uh, broomstick, really easy to get hold of in any hardware store. We need to cut just a couple of circles off of this. So we're going to use the mitre fence to cut our little cams because um, we want these nice and straight and at 90 degrees. Um, important that these ones are a little bit straighter than if we were going to run off of the, um, the rip fence. So we're going to cross cut a couple of these, keeping our um, broomstick handle tight up against the um, mitre fence. So on with the extractor. Bring the project away from the kind of cutting edge. Bandsaw goes on. Okay, so there's our two little, what will be little cams. Um, important to notice that there is a little bit of um, kind of fluffiness come off that bandsaw cut. We need to sand that off so that these are nice and round and that that fluffiness doesn't increase the diameter of these. These need to be pretty much the same size um, to, to work with our movement. So we will we'll sand these little uh, kind of uh, fluffy edges off. Uh, before we drill them. So remember we just want to take off that little kind of burr or breakout we got off the bandsaw. I'm just using a little sanding block. So whiz them off. And another one. And these little cams are going to sit directly on that six mil dowel. So it's important that we change that drill bit. Um, into a six mil one. We've got the 6.5 in there at the moment. So we need to just change this drill bit out. That's the 6.5, we change it for the six mil. I'm just gonna use a piece of paper because we want to drill these in exactly the same position. So what I'm gonna do is just wrap a piece of paper around our top one and just 
using a compass, find the center and just come off center a little bit and then um, poke that through our piece of paper, give it a little wiggle so that it marks the piece of wood underneath. Quite a hard thing to measure um, these little circles. So we're just using our piece of paper again, we're gonna seat that round in there and then we can use the hole that we made previously and use that as a little template to guide where that's gonna be. And then we're gonna have two little holes in the same position on both bits. Um, this is too small now to drill um, holding my hand. So I've got a little vise here um, and it's got a little V in it. And we wanna just grip onto that one. Lower the table again, give ourselves a bit of room under the drill bit there. Make sure everything's nice and stable. We're gonna just test and locate that little hole that we made with the compass on the spur. These are lip and spur type drill bit. And we're just gonna drill right the way through. That's one. Again, just get that lined up with our little hole. And that's our two little off-center cams. Okay. So we've created our two little cams that are gonna sit under a disc, but we need to make our disc now. We're just gonna mark out a circle on a bit of ply here. Just gonna push that point in. And mark out a circle. Then we can cut this on the scroll saw. We need to drill a little mid middle hole as well to receive our dowel. And that's a six mil dowel, so we're gonna use a six mil drill bit in the, um, in the drill press. So just cutting out this disc, this is our workshop scroll saw. And remove that piece. So we've cut our little circle. We've just got a little nib there, which we can just sand off. So just getting rid of that little nib there. Now, it's not really important that this is perfectly round. This isn't um, driving anything. It's really just gonna have those two cams sat on this bottom face. So it's important that it's flat, but not particularly um, that it's perfectly round. Good. And we've still got our little bit where the compass has made its mark and that's the center point that we're going to be drilling on on the pillar drill. So just drilling on that little center mark left by the compass, a little bit bigger in diameter this one so I'm happy to hold it with my hand and I've just set the height of the drill so that it just, the little spur on the end just peeps into our um, backing board. 
So it's not going to drill right the way through. Just going to leave a very thin amount of material on the bottom face. And that's it. So the next little piece we're going to make is this little thing. It's kind of like a just a little flap with a hole um, screw through and as that turns that's going to lift a little arm and then drop off again. So that's the piece we're making next and we're going to use the same plies we use to cut the disc. This one is it's an 8mm ply so it's 8mm thick. We're going to go 20 wide 20 mil wide. And uh, let's do another one here. We can bring that line down. And then they're going to be 35 long. So marking off at 35. And then 70. And I'm just going to freehand across there. These don't have to be precise, these are just little working parts. So again, just got to cut this out on the scroll saw and drill a hole through from the edge on this one. So like I say, just going to cut out these two little bits here and then they'll be ready for drilling. So just going to cut this off first and then um, cut the two bits. So we've got our two little bits. We need to drill through these on edge. And this is going to be the six mil again, because we want these to grip onto our kind of drive shaft that runs through the middle. So we're going to use a six mil drill bit and drill through off to one side. Okay, so we've got our little eight mil bits of ply. I've also come in eight mil from the edge. So it's the same on both, and I've just put a little pencil mark where we're going to drill it. Now we've got a six mil drill bit there. So in theory, we're only gonna have one millimeter either side of that drill hole. So we wanna get it nice and central. So, you know, um, mark it up and just be careful where you're drilling with this. So I'm looking from the side here, just making sure that we're nice and central in between the layers on the ply. And as I come down, it starts to describe that little circle and I can see we've got plenty of material left both sides. And we're going right the way through with this one. And now I just felt the um, kind of pressure change telling me we're all the way through. So that's one. Let's load up the other. And this vise is doing a couple of things. This is a really small component. We don't want to be holding it, you know, with our fingertips. Um, but also it's keeping it up nice and straight with these jaws. So before I get the drill running, I'm just going to try and center that. Again, just being 
really careful where we're going. We don't want to cut through the side. That looks good. So then we can turn the drill on. Just watching where that circle describes on the top. And that looks okay there. And then right the way through with our drilling. Good. So we've got two bits or two kind of um, flaps that are going to rotate on our drive shaft, um, which is going to go through these holes. Um, these need just rounding over um, so that they don't catch on the dowel. Um, and you could either do that on your uh, belt sander, disc sander. I think I'm just going to do it by hand on a little bit of abrasive. So let's say just knocking off these edges and we can just roll the um, block or a little flap that we've made just over a bit of abrasive. That's probably a bit fine. Let's get something a little bit more aggressive. So that feels nice and rough, like a hundred grit or something. And just roll that edge until we get a nice little curve. So that's our little components finish for now. We'll revisit those in just a moment. But um, our box is dry now, it's all glued up. We need to find center on this center line. So it's 180 mil long. So we're just gonna pop a little mark on 90 and then we can drill this. And again, we're using the six mil dowel for this one. So we need to cut a 6.5 to allow this to move up and down. Where this one is fixed at six mil, the one in here needs to be six and a half so that this can move freely up and down and round and round in that hole. So back to the pillar drill again. We're gonna drill a 6.5 there and then we can start to put the bits together and work out where our other drillings are gonna be for little worms that are gonna pop up and down. Because what we're trying to achieve here is we're gonna have a bird in the middle it's going to be looking side to side using that same kind of mechanism that we looked at earlier. We're going to have a couple of little worms popping up from behind some shrubbery. So it's kind of like he's looking for the worms. Okay, so we're drilling through the top of our box now. We're going to go nice and slow with this lip and spur uh, drill bit and then it should give us a nice clean exit as it comes through because we can't support under here now. Line up that little spur with the center point that we've marked. And then just nice and slow. We're gonna drill right the way through so it cuts through the bottom and not pushes through. We can assemble this a little bit now. Here's our six mil kind of drive shaft I'm calling it. And we can just put that through a little bit. We want to put one of these um, kind of rotating little flaps on. That's going to slide on first. We want our two cams and we're not too worried about position yet. We just want to get them all on here. This is a bit like making a kebab. You got to thread all the bits on. And they can be quite stiff, but we want them to be really. We don't want to introduce any glue or anything just yet because um, we need to sort out the positioning of everything. So we've got our uh, one of these, then we've got our two kind of cams, and then we want another one of these pointing the opposite direction to the other one. And then we can thread this all along like I say, this can be a little bit challenging, a little bit fiddly. And just on this end, I have a piece of dowel which I've drilled. And I'm just gonna put that, that's a, um, an eight mil bit of dowel with the six mil drill hole. And that's just gonna help stop this from sliding around too much on that end. So, we want to bring that over. And we know those cams are going to be kind of sat 
directly under the center piece and they want to be at extremes to one another so one's facing up one's facing down that's going to work that mechanism we can then get our little wheel that we just cut and drilled that's going to go underneath our center hole and we're just going to pop this bit of dowel in there six mil dowel so that's gone in the top there they then rest on our cams and if we turn that back and forth it's going to pick up on each of those cams and because they're either side of this um, wheel and we're constantly turning one way it's going to pick up on this and turn it backwards and forwards so now we want to drill a couple more holes because we want to have um, these little worms just popping up either side of our bird here to just uh, decide on that distance we can look at our bits underneath here we can take it from that center point and we know if we just bring that in a touch that when this rotates it's going to touch the bottom of our next dowel here so I'm using that distance that we've measured off of that to just mark on the top face there and then we can do another one let's just measure that so that they're nice and so that's 40 mil in there again from that center line we're coming 40 mil in from the edge there and we can just make a little mark again these aren't crucial measurements they are just kind of guidelines so now we can drill these we are using a slightly smaller dowel for that we're going down to the four mil dowel so we're going to use a 4.5 drill bit again just to allow that little bit of movement so it's not tight through friction um, through that section so and really useful to have these drill bits that go up in 0.5 increments this is the uh, fish set the um, metric set that that goes up in 0.5 increments find that in the links so like I say, 4.5 drill bit, we're just going to drill straight through that top face. Again, you feel the change in resistance. Really useful, these little lip and spur ones to line up those um, marks that we made. There we go. So just to test that, we've again used a bit of red tape. That's really just so that you can see it a bit better. Um, and that's going to give us, um, it's going to make it stop from falling straight through as well. But it's going to give us our first idea of what this, is, uh, this movement's going to do. So you can see it rises up as this is turning back and forth. Um, I'm just going to test the other one as well. And I think that's probably about the right length um, of material. So we can cut this dowel just above the red tape and we're going to put some little worms um, that are going to shoot up and down just like that bit of red tape is kind of peeking out from behind. We'll put some little um, kind of foliage or, or something in the foreground to hide the mechanism. So happy with that, happy with the length of the dowel. Um, again, the the component that we're going to be putting on here is going to stop this piece of dowel from falling right the way through so I can take that out now make a little pencil mark for where our components going to come up to and we need to leave just a little bit of material above that so we can take our bit of tape off and I'm just anticipating that we're not going to go too far into our um, kind of cut worms, our little wooden worms that we're going to make. Um, so I'm just going to draw a pencil line, probably about five, six mil above the line that we've just drawn. And um, we can cut it there and then we can use that one to give us our sizing for the, for the other one that we're going to do on the other side. So just a quick cut with the, um, the Japanese pull saw.
Okay, so we've got a piece like that, and then we're gonna use that one as our template to cut the next. So just advancing that along in the vise, and then we're going to put that side by side with that one. We can make a little cut, and then, good. So we've got our two dowels. So just round off these hard edges on the dowel. Again, they can catch a little bit when they're rubbing up against the other bit. And we don't want it to sort of stall through friction. So we're just knocking off any hard edges, giving that a nice rounded top and bottom. Good. So we're nearly on to cutting our parts now. So we want to do a little bird. So we need to cut the body of the bird. It's going to be face on and then it's going to have a little head that's going to go bob side to side. So a piece of material here. This one I have already drilled through and that's the um, 6.5 to match with the um, 6 mil dowel. So I've drilled this right the way through and um, we can just draw a little body shape onto this. And really kind of keeping it simple, it's gonna you know, sit side by side with the other one we created. And that's uh, quite a kind of um, naive kind of bird shape. So we're going for almost like a, a Zeppelin shape or a big chunky cigar or something. Like an oval with two flats on the end. Our bird's head is going to come from the same thickness material. Um, so what we've got there, we want to leave as a um, on the top there. So let's just measure that actually. So we are about 17 mil. We follow that, we've got a little center point there. And we can put uh, 17 mil either side. And, there. and that was just drilled exactly the same on the pillar drill in the vise, so it holds it nice and upright. But we can cut that little body, and I think we'll cut some little legs. And again, we just want to avoid that little hole at the bottom. We're really just going to do some simple little lines, and then a suggestion that it's going into the body there and here. So some really kind of simple leg shapes on our piece of timber. So we can cut this one now. Just need to cut these two sides off and then cut those little leg details in. Like I say, keeping it really simple. You could do a bit more to this if you wanted to make it a bit more pretty. Copy a bird, actual bird shape on there. So we are going to cut that out next on the scroll saw. So if you've seen these videos before, you know that I like the um, the modified geometry. Uh, this is a number five in the in the scroll saw here. So we cut the main body shape, just a couple of little legs to cut in. Okay, so we've got another piece of this um, 17 mil tulip. So it's the same thickness as the body that we've just cut. So we're gonna be drilling um, quite close to the edge of the board here. I've set the depth of the pillar drill so it's not gonna go in too deep. And we're gonna lower the table until it goes into the project about, about eight or 10 mil. We can lock the table off again then. And take it all the way down 
and then we've got a hole drilled there that just goes down to a certain depth. It's going to be 6mm to accept the 6mm dowel. So we're back at the scroll saw. This is the drill hole that we've just drilled um, and we know that that goes kind of 8 to 10 mil deep um, and we're going to draw just a really simple head shape on here which is just going to look like a curve that comes from that corner and back in on itself down there. We're trying to match the one that we did on our last um, project and it has a beak coming off of that. So like I say, really simple. We're going to cut a, um, a nice smile on our bird. So it's going to have a nice big smile on the beak. We're going to introduce a drill hole for the eye as well in a moment. But let's just get this cut. I'm going to do a little loop to loop to get that bird beak nice and sharp. So we're cutting into the waste material, cutting around here, and then picking up back on this bottom line of the beak. And that's going to give us a really nice sharp definition. And then I'm going to come in just below this, um, this point here to cut this, um, the kind of smile on our bird. We don't want to wreck that nice sharp edge, so I'm coming in just below. Quite a small component now, so I'm using a grip right round to the back here and just pushing it forward with my finger. and then back up through that line. Okay, so we've got our little components here. We've got the bird's head, the bird's body. Now, if we just take this bit of tape back off of our dowel, hopefully this will be the right length, but we can always cut a new piece. So, the bird's body, we've still got a few pencil marks. Just whiz them off with a bit of abrasive. Um, and, you know, this doesn't have to be cut out as a flat project. You could do a compound cut and cut a 3D bird. This is really just so you get the idea of how the mechanisms are working. You can take this your own direction. Now, I think that down needs to be just a touch longer. So let's do that. Let's take that one out. Remove this down. Keep that one there and we just need to cut a slightly longer piece of the six mil dowel. So using this one as a reference, we want to cut just a little bit longer. So I've added on another kind of 10 mil there. So I'm going to cut this, just using my knuckle there to rest the saw arm, slide to get that first cut, and then pop that back into the mechanism. So we don't have to round this off. This is not going to, um, you know, rub against anything. So we can just push that in to our little kind of flywheel underneath. Just get rid of that little bit of breakout from the saw. The body goes on, oops. The body goes on top there. Okay. And then this one should be a friction fit on top. And instead of pushing down there, I'm just going to hold that little disc from underneath and push the head on there. Now if we turn this back and forth, we should see the bird's head turning. We're not too worried that it's not, um, you know, perfectly looking side to side. We can adjust that as we go. Um, but just so that we know the mechanism's working and our little birdie's having a little look around. That's good. So last little bit we need to, um, 
create our little worms that are going to come out here and then also a little bit of um, kind of foliage in the foreground. So for our little worms we are going to want to create something like, um, so we've got our, our bits of dowel um, that are going to go in here. We want to create a little worm that's going to sit on the top and to do that um, we need some slightly thinner material than this. This is a little bit thick. We've got one that we've made earlier as well, a kind of little wiggly worm that's going to sit there. Don't worry, it's a bit thick at the bottom because that's going to be hidden behind a little tuft of grass. Um, and then we can paint this or stain it, whatever we want to do. So here's our thinner piece of material which we're going to cut our little worms from. You can see I've already practiced with a couple. Again, we're going to have a four mil drill hole to accept that four mil dowel and that's going to be what we're trying to achieve here. So that's going to sit in there. So that should be popping back down like that. So let's, um, let's cut a couple of four mil holes in this um, and then we can cut our little worms out of that material. So we've swapped back to our four mil drill bit. We've set the depth so it's not going too far into our material and we're just drilling up on edge. Again, we must use the vise to keep this nice and um, at 90 degrees to the table and in line with our drill bit. So I always like to kind of offer the drill bit up to make sure that we're going to be hitting that center mark because again, quite thin material. We're not leaving too much either side of our drill hole. This is just for one of the worms, of course. Let's do as many as you like. We just add, need to add more drill holes into the project. So that's our worm, and you could keep going if you wanted to do a bunch of them. We're just gonna do the one because I've already pre-made one. So now we can go back to the scroll saw, we can cut our worm shape, and we need to cut a couple of bits of detail for the foreground. So. That's our four mil drill hole. We know it went in a certain depth, so we're just gonna avoid that little area. So we can mark that off with a pencil. We don't wanna cut into our drill hole. So just bringing a line up from both sides. And then we want this kind of wiggly worm shape. So just like an S shape. And then bring it back on itself like that. And then we want to cut a bit of um, kind of foliage, I guess, or a bit of uh, detail for the foreground to kind of mask this chunky bit of the worm, really. So we're going to um, just do a few kind of spiky shapes to represent some kind of bush or some grass, I guess, at that um, sort of size. <clears throat> and then we just need to cut these bits out. So back on with the scroll saw. So there's our wiggly worm, I'm going to pop that to one side. And this I think I'll cut out that shape. And then we can cut in and out of this kind of crown shape and keep our nice definition. We're not having to spin around on a, you know, with a small piece.
So we've cut our little um, kind of spiky grass or shrub um, out on the, on the scroll saw there. This is just a little piece that's going to sit in front of our worms to kind of try and hide a bit of the mechanism um, and just give it a little bit more kind of depth to the whole thing. A little bit more tricky to cut out this um, very small shape on our um, workshop scroll saw here as the apertures um, going down into the um, extraction plate are, are a little bit larger than they are on the um, professional version um, and of course um, we need to be a little bit careful that it's not going to tip or um, or kind of fall down our little extraction plate so we want to span across that gap okay so now for a bit of assembly we need to um, start gluing some bits together um, so a bit of tight bond and I'm just going to put just a tiny little bit we don't need lots of this material or lots of this glue I should say just enough to hold it together and it's important that we don't get it in this hole that was going to um, create that little friction point or stick to our dowel so the body's going on there and just a little bit of downwards pressure and I'm just going to rotate this and make sure that our dowel still working here and that looks good. The head is just a push fit so we can just push that one on we'll probably wait for that to dry but just for today we're going to just slide that one on but it's not touching but it's just on there and then for our little worms we can glue them onto our, our dowel so I'm going to put a spot of glue we can pop our worm on top and I'm going to do a little bit of shaping to these so for the purposes of today's video we're just going to drop these in but I'm going to do a little bit more of a tidy up with this so there's a bits that need sanding some pencil marks that need to come off and I'm also going to introduce a little bit of color with spirit stain um, on this project so the next stage for this would be um, we can glue down our little uh, bits of foliage so a bit of glue on there, Let's lay, keep that laying down and we're just going to pop that in front of our one of our little worms and hold that down, good and then a little splodge on there, again that's just going to sit in front of our little worm and hide the dowel as it comes around. Okay, so we've done a little bit more work. I've applied a bit of colour, so we've put a bit of green on the, our um, little plants down here, the kind of foliage, and I've just put a little cardboard cut out in behind to give it a little bit more depth. Um, and also, I wasn't quite happy with the shape of the body of the bird, so I've just put, again, another little bit of card um, to kind of suggest some wings and, again, create a bit of depth. You could cut them out of a very thin ply, but yeah, we've added a bit of colour as well. We've done um, some green spirit stains on here. We've used just some Sharpies, some uh, regular Sharpies. So these are permanent markers um, on the little worms and on uh, yellow for the beak and the legs of the bird. And then um, a, a brown spirit stain. Uh, I think this was a medium oak on the bird. And on here, it's, I tried to get like a mottled effect for the feathers and things. So we've used a little bit of uh, candle wax. I just rubbed a bit of candle wax on there and that resists the stain and creates like a kind of a more of a mottled effect. We've got the mechanism going. So these little worms are popping up and the bird's head going side to side, having a little look round for his dinner. So another little automata. This one slightly different movement. If you're interested in this kind of thing, we have done another one with different movements in. So check out that other automata video. And thank you for watching. This is Woodworking Wisdom. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and um, we'll see you soon for some more Woodworking Wisdom. Bye-bye.